thank you to all of you for 200,000 subscribers. Every country has a flag, and a lot of times, when we think of a country, the flag is the first thing we think about. Or maybe that's just me because I'm obsessed with them. Whether you're also obsessed with flags or not, I think we can agree that a flag is always a big part of a country's identity. They, for instance, influence the colors on their national sport teams, which represent the nation throughout the world. They usually represent the country's character, their history, culture, and sometimes even their local nature. But not only have they changed throughout time, perhaps giving us different views of how a specific country was, depending on what historical time the flag existed, the flags we have today and that represent each country in modern times could also have been different. When the time came for each flag to be adopted, most of the times there were more than one option, various proposals that were put forward, sometimes through literal contests, that could have instead been chosen to represent each country. So in this video, I want to give some attention to those flags, which we have likely never seen or paid attention to. Some of the proposed flags that were never used because countries chose their current flag instead. So let's get started with the one on the thumbnail, the US flag. The US flag has changed a lot. We've talked about this numerous times in past videos, with the number of stars changing as new states joined the union. The stars changed, but the stripes never did. They have always been 13, representing the initial 13 colonies which rebelled against the British in alternating red and white. However, the choice of colors for the stripes could have been different. In fact, it seems that at one point, it was different. In 1777, a flag resolution was passed, stating that the flag of the 13 United States be 13 stripes, alternate, red and white, with the blue canton and white stars. However, despite this resolution, the early years of American independence featured many different flags. Most were individually crafted rather than mass produced. While there are many examples of 13 star arrangements, some of those flags included blue stripes as well as red and white. In fact, Benjamin Franklin and John Adams in a letter dated in October of 1778, to Ferdinand I of the two Sicilies described the American flag as consisting of 13 stripes, alternately red, white, and blue. We also have the example of some naval flags used by John Paul Jones, the earliest well-known American naval commander, who chose to fly a US flag also with blue stripes, although these weren't alternating in the same way. It's pretty incredible to think how different it would be if this had been the flag that stuck, using blue stripes as well. It wouldn't change that much because the template of the flag would be the same, plus blue was already used in the canton, so the red, white, and blue colors associated with the US wouldn't change, but still, it would be pretty interesting. The flag of Hawaii sort of gives us an idea of how that looks, although with less stripes and the Union Jack. The other one on the thumbnail is Spain. In 1785, King Charles III decided it was time to replace the Spanish war ensign, which was just a white field with the Spanish coat of arms, with a new distinct ensign that could not be mistaken with those of other European countries, mainly the ones ruled by Bourbon, such as France, Tuscany, or the two Sicilies, which used white banners. So they held a contest for a new military ensign where this flag won. And eventually, this military ensign became the state flag, Spain's national flag. Therefore, if any other one of the contestant flags had been chosen, it's likely that that one would have then become the national flag changing the way we look at Spain entirely. So let's see what those proposed flags were. Most of them used red and yellow too, but in different shapes, some giving more space to the yellow and some to the red. Some like the one used in the thumbnail used white and red, and some used yellow and blue or red and blue. Can you imagine how strange it would be for the Spanish flag today to have been yellow with blue stripes? it would be very Swedish of them. Also, speaking of Swedish, how strange would it be for a Southern European country to have a flag with a Nordic cross? And all this could have happened because these were actual proposals in the contest where the current flag 
was chosen. Right next to Spain, we have Portugal. In 1910, Portugal had a revolution which put an end to the monarchy and implemented a republic. And so, with the change of regime, they also wanted to change the flag since the white and blue one with a crowned coat of arms was very associated with the monarchy. The main debate was whether to keep these two colors, the blue and white, or to implement new ones, green and red, as they eventually did. By the way, Portugal is another good example of how the colors characterize the country, also being used in the equipment war by national sports teams. Despite there not having been an official contest, as far as I know, various proposals were put forth by society in general. Here are a few of those. This one, for instance, also chose green and red, but put a white lozang in the center with the blue and golden armillary sphere plus the coat of arms. This one did the opposite, choosing blue and white and adding small green and red stripes plus the coat of arms in the center. And this one joined the previous two, sort of, mainly blue and white, but using the lozang in red and green. Another apparently wanted to use a Spanish pattern with the Hungarian colors. One wanted to imitate Brazil, adding a sun with the words order and freedom, like Brazil's order and progress. Plus, there were also some absurd ones like this, which was apparently trying to break the record for the biggest amount of symbols you could fit in a flag. But thankfully, they landed on a much better one. And it's kind of crazy to think what it would have been like if another one of these was chosen. Speaking of neighbors, the US's northern neighbor, Canada. In 1964, a great Canadian flag debate took place in order to choose a replacement for Canada's flag, which up until that point had still been the British colonial flag. The debate ended with the adoption of the current maple leaf flag in red and white, but a few other proposals were put forward. There were mainly four other finalists considered. One maintained the Union Jack in the top left, adding a golden maple leaf. Another used the current colors but without stripes, dividing a white and red background diagonally and having a darker red maple leaf in the center. One used three maple leaves on a branch in the same pattern as the one chosen but with blue side stripes instead of red. And another was essentially the current flag but adding both the Union Jack on the top left but also a French ensign on the top right, perhaps to represent the two countries which colonized the Canadian territories. I found this cartoon from the time which apparently criticized the insistence of French territories to be represented on the flag, satirizing a flag proposal which was the French flag with a side stripe where the Union Jack was present but having a maple leaf below it where the leaf was surrounded by French fleur-de-lis. Next, Germany. After the war in 1949, Germany knew it was going to have to change its flag and so a number of proposals were put forward. All of them except one which wanted a return to the German Empire's flag used the same colors, gold, red and black the colors of the old German Weimar Republic, but they were present in different patterns before a choice was made for the current horizontal tricolor. Three of them wanted to implement a Nordic cross pattern, but with different ways of displaying the colors, choosing a Norway style template in order to display the three colors, either with a red, black or golden background, and then the double colored cross with the two remaining colors. Another wanted the current flag, but with a golden cross in the center. Another wanted a US style flag with a red field, black canton and golden stars, representing each of Germany's federal states. And another wanted vertical stripes instead of horizontal. The one that I think would be strangest if it had been implemented would be the one with the canton and stars, although imagining Germany with a Nordic cross also seems kind of weird. China also has some of the coolest proposed flags ever. I think this also took place in 1949, but don't quote me on that. As the People's Republic of China took control of the mainland, they wanted to choose a new flag to represent the new regime. And so the political consultative conference started collecting flag proposals. There were a lot, at least 40 of them, so I won't bore you with all of them. The vast majority used red and gold as the main colors, although a few included blue as well. And some, even the first flag of the Republic of China with a hammer and sickle 
in the top left. This one wanted a red field with a blue rectangle plus a white cross inside it on the left side. I have no idea what this has to do with China. Others used green and white instead of gold on a red field as well. Most of them used star symbols and a lot of them used lines slash stripes as well, like this one with a single star and one, two or three stripes. Apparently the design Mao and others liked had a golden star in the corner on a red flag that was charged with a golden horizontal bar, but this ended up not being chosen. There were also some other really weird proposals, like this one that looks like Peru's flag and this one that looks like Catalonia's independence movement's flag, and one that looks straight out of the Roman Empire. One I actually really like is this one, a red field, white canton, inside it a red star with two blue stripes. But still, considering the context, I think they made a good choice with the current one, although I don't particularly like the way that the stars are displayed. Speaking of stars on flags, we can also see examples not of countries, but of country unions. For instance, the proposed flags for the European Union. One wanted the flag to be a constellation of stars upon a blue field. Each star would represent a European capital and would be in the geographical place of that same city, creating a new artificial constellation on a blue field. The biggest star would represent the supposed capital of Strasbourg. Another wanted a single large yellow star on a light blue field. This one proposed a light blue field as well, but with eight interlaced white rings. Although the founding members were six, so I don't know why the choice of eight. Another was Kalergi's pan-European Union flag, a blue field with a yellow circle and a red cross in the center, reminding me of the Nordic Kalmar Union's flag. Plus there are a lot of other non-official flag proposals, like the barcode one using each country's colors, a display of stars in a Nordic cross, or a US style flag for a more federalized Europe in green. I think the current choice was a really good one, although I would change the 12 fixed stars to a one star per member country as to promote a sense of belonging to the union. And finally, the most recent example we have of this, a country that recently had the chance to change their flag, held a contest and then a vote. New Zealand. The debate to change the New Zealand flag has existed for a long time, for the same reason that Canada wanted to change their flag. Now that they're independent, even if they are a part of the British Commonwealth, it doesn't make sense to some people to maintain the Union Jack on the flag. In 2016, New Zealand held a flag contest and referendum. The old flag won and is still in use, so the people rejected a change. But let's take a look at a few of the proposals. We have the most serious ones, especially the one who was put up to a vote against the current flag, keeping the colors, the constellation, adding a white leaf and a black color. This was the flag that won the shortlist vote. The other ones on the shortlist were these two in black and white and the rest in red, blue, white and black, using the traditional colors and symbols of the country. But other designs were also presented, like this green and white one representing a traditional Maori carving pattern or this other one in green, black and white. Plus the funny, really weird ones like the famous kiwi bird shooting lasers out of its eyes, one of a poorly drawn person riding a bicycle, or this inception flag bearing kiwi bird. So those are a few of the proposed flags that countries chose not to use. If you like this video, I can maybe do one speculating about possible flag changes in the future, like the UK, where in 2013, they collected a few proposals for an eventual flag change should Scotland leave the UK. A few switched the blue with the green, others added the Welsh dragon, or it could just switch to a white background. There's been, for instance, a lot of talk regarding a flag change in Australia, so I could choose a few countries that have movements who want to change the flag and talk about those. Let me know in the comments if you would like to see that. Either way, thanks so much for watching the video. Remember to subscribe if you want to catch future videos and I will see you next time for more general knowledge.